Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about relief displacement, tilt, crab and drift. These are some of the terms that we may come across when we study aerial photography or uh, aerial photogrammetry. We are all familiar with aerial photography. It is nothing but the taking of uh, photographs of the surface from an aircraft or other flying objects. There is no need to go deep into that. Before going to the current topic, I would like you to recall some of the terms uh, such as fiducial marks and the three photo centers. They are nadir point, principal point and the ISO center. So this is a typical vertical aerial photograph and you can see some markings on the four corners as well as on the midpoints of the edges of this photograph. These markings are called the fiducial marks. Fiducial marks are nothing but the optically projected geometric figures which define the coordinate axis and geometric center of a single aerial photograph. The x-axis defines the direction of flight and the y-axis defines the flight line. The importance of uh, such markings is that it is uh, used to find the principal point of the photograph. If the opposite fiducial marks are connected, they intersect at the image center. This center is called the principal point of the aerial photograph. That is, the intersection of the fiducial marks represent the principal point of the photograph. Principal point is otherwise called as optical or geometric center of the photograph. Principal point is the intersection between the projection of the optical axis and the ground. And nadir point uh, which is also called as vertical point or plumb point is the point vertically beneath the camera center at the time of exposure where a plumb line extended from the camera lens to the ground intersects the photo image. In the case of a vertical aerial photograph the nadir point and the principal point are the same. But in the case of a tilted aerial photograph both these points are different. Isocenter is the point on the photo that falls on a line approximately halfway between the principal point and the nadir point. So let's move on to the first topic that is relief displacement. The surface of the earth is not smooth and flat. As a consequence there is a natural phenomenon that disrupts the true orthogonality of photo image features. That phenomenon is called the relief displacement. It is nothing but the shift in an object's image position caused by its elevation above a particular datum. A vertical object such as a building or a tree will appear to be lying along a line radial to the image nadir point. This deformation is called as the relief displacement. In the two images shown here, we can see this phenomenon. That is, that vertical structure, the water tank and the chimney is photographed on the film as if they are lying on that plane. Mathematically, it is the magnitude of displacement in image between the top and bottom of elevated objects. That is, relief displacement is the apparent leaning of elevated objects away from the principal point. In the image shown at the right side of your screen, when the top and bottom of that building, it's a vertical structure, when it is projected onto the film plane or the photographic plane, that magnitude is called as the relief displacement. There will be no relief displacement at nadir. Relief displacement on any pair of adjacent photographs always occur in opposite directions because the relief displacement on each photograph radiates outward from a point near the center of a photograph. I hope you can visualize or imagine this phenomenon that is at the nadir point there will be no displacement and it radiates outward from the nadir point like this. In this image, the phenomenon is somewhat more clear. The horizontal surface to which heights are referred is known as a datum plane. With respect to a datum, relief displacement is outward for points whose elevations are above the datum and inward for points whose elevations are below the datum. Camera tilt, curvature of the earth and terrain relief, all these contribute to shifting photo image features away from the true geographic location. In earlier days, aerial photographs are 
taken using handheld cameras from the aircraft but with the advancement in the technologies camera tilt is greatly reduced or perhaps eliminated by the use of gyroscopically controlled cameras the below image shows a gyroscopically stabilized camera which is mounted onto a aircraft this is how a gyroscopically stabilized camera work as you can see irrespective of the motion of the platform the camera is more stabilized the earth curvature is of little consequence on large scale photography the relatively small amount of lateral distance covered by the exposure frame introduces only a minimal amount of curvature if any topographic relief can have a great effect on displaying image features the amount of image displacement increases on high degree slopes and features displacement also increases radially away from the photo sender apart from this these are the factors which affect the relief displacement that is height of the object distance of objects from nadir point focal length flying height or altitude height of objects in relation to datum plane effect of the field of view let's discuss each one of them first one height of the object in this case a b and c d are different objects of different height which is placed at equal distance from the nadir point when these objects are projected onto the photographic plane you can see that the magnitude of the relief displacement of ab is more when compared to that of cd that is when the distance of objects from the nadir point remain the same but the object height increased or decreased the higher object is displaced more in the second case that is distance of object from the nadir two objects of the same height is located at two different locations from the nadir point here in this case when the distance of object is more from the nadir the relief displacement will be more and vice versa next one the effect of focal length when the same object having a particular height is photographed with different focal length namely f and f1 we can see that relief displacement increases with increase in focal length and decreases with a decrease in the focal length fourth one is flying height or altitude here we can see that if the focal length of the camera remained constant when the flying height is increased the relief displacement will be decreased here the object ab has been photographed with two different altitude with the same focal length in this case the relief displacement decreased as the flying height is increased so in every flight missions in order to maintain a certain scale as the flying height is increased the focal length must be increased next one is height of object in relation to datum plane this effect has been already discussed that is relief displacement will be outward for points whose elevation are above the datum and it will be inward for points whose elevation are below the datum and the last one is the effect of field of view usually normal angle of view will result in smaller relief displacement relief displacement affects the construction of mosaics since mosaicing consists of uh, piecing adjacent photographs together to form one composite picture large relief displacement on successive photographs will make it difficult or even impossible to form a continuous uninterrupted picture at the same time relief displacement is important in the way that it enables us to calculate the height of objects recalling all the factors which affects the relief displacement that has been discussed so far we can say that the amount of relief displacement is directly proportional to the difference in the elevation and directly proportional to the radial distance from the nadir and inversely proportional to the altitude or flying height above the data using trigonometric principles we can derive equation for calculating the relief displacement from this diagram the height is given by h equal to small d into capital h by r where small d is the relief displacement capital h is the flying height above the datum and small r is the radial distance from the principal point to the top of the building here the flying height will be the non parameter and the other parameters 
like the radial distance and the relief displacement can be calculated from the aerial photograph itself. From an aerial photograph, the principal point is obtained by intersecting opposite fiducial marks. From the principal point, the distance to the top of the displaced object such as a building is measured that is the small r and the distance between the top and bottom of the displaced object can be also measured. From this measurements, the height of the building is obtained as h equal to d into h divided by r. This is what relief displacement is all about. If you want I can explain how to derive equation for calculating the relief displacement. Next topic is tilt, crab and drift. In any ideal case, an aircraft flies along straight and parallel lines in accordance with the flight plan. While in real circumstances, the aircraft direction and positions and hence the camera within can be disturbed by external factors such as crosswinds or other aircraft navigation problems causing anomalies in the overlapping of aerial photo pairs. These anomalies are named tilt, crab and drift. Usually in every flight missions, it is planned in such a way that there should be at least 60 to 70 percent overlap and about 25 to 40 percent sight lap in the aerial photograph. The overlaps and sight laps are ensured for complete coverage of the area of interest and for stereoscopic view. So when an aerial photograph is affected by these anomalies, there may be chance for creating gaps in the aerial photograph. Before moving on to these anomalies, let's discuss about the axis of an aircraft. These are three in number which passes through the center of gravity of the aircraft and are perpendicular to each other. The first one is the x-axis or longitudinal axis which passes through the length of the aircraft and the rotation about this axis is called the roll. Y-axis or lateral axis is parallel to the wings of the aircraft and the rotation about this axis result in pitch. The third one is the z-axis uh, which is a perpendicular axis and the rotation about this axis gives rise to yaw, yaw motion of the aircraft. First one, tilt. Tilt occurs when the plane is not horizontal at the time of exposure. It is the deviation angle between the horizontal surface and the flight line measured on the vertical section. Tilt displacement can be defined as the difference between the distance of the image of a point on the tilted photograph from the ISO center and the distance of the image of the same point on the photograph from the ISO center if there had been no tilt. In general, tilt is the angle between the optical axis of the camera and the vertical. Tilt may be mainly due to improper mounting of the camera or due to the tilting of the aircraft along the flight line or perpendicular to the flight line. It increases radially from the ISO center. Tilt of a photograph may be resolved into two components that is x tilt and y tilt. x tilt is the amount of tilt in the direction normal to the flight line and y tilt is the amount of tilt in the direction of flight line. Let's discuss each one of them. First one x tilt. x tilt can be otherwise called as lateral tilt. It is the component of tilt about the x axis of the aircraft. That is, it is the amount of tilt in the direction normal to the flight line and the angle formed can be called as angle psi. An x tilt of a photograph will cause the sight lap to increase on one side of the flight line and to decrease on the opposite side. It is caused due to the lowering of wings to one side. When the left wing is lowered, it is called as positive x tilt and when the right wing is lowered, it is called as the negative x tilt. The effect of x tilt on aerial photograph is corrected by increasing planned sight lap. This adjustment helps to ensure proper coverage and at the same time allows for certain abnormal relief displacement. Second one is y tilt. It is also called as longitudinal tilt. It is the component of tilt about the y axis of the flight and it is the amount in the direction of flight. The angle formed is called as angle phi. When a photograph has undergone a y tilt, the overlap on one side will be greater than the desired amount of overlap, while the overlap on the 
other side will be smaller than the desired amount. Vitality is caused due to the nose of an aircraft being lowered or raised. Similarly in the case of X tilt, when the aircraft nose is lowered, it is called as the positive Y tilt and when the aircraft nose is raised, it is called as negative Y tilt. Two successively exposed photographs with opposite Y tilt will cause the increase or decrease in overlap to accumulate whereas Y tilt in the same direction will to a great extent cancel the sight lap to increase in overlap. The effect of white tilt on overlap can be taken into account by using the viewfinder to control the overlap. The next anomaly is the crap. Crap is the angle formed between the flight line and edges of photo in direction of flight and caused by not having focal plane squared within the flight direction at the time of exposure. This happens when nose of the flight is turned against a sideward wind in order to maintain the predetermined flight direction that is in the side wind correction the original path is maintained but the aerial coverage is much different than originally planned this defect called the crab is corrected by the rotation of camera on vertical axis through viewfinder this figure shows a schema for the effect of crab on aerial photograph and the angle formed between the flight line and the edges of the aerial photograph is the crab angle. In ideal cases, crab should not be more than 5% of the photograph. The effect of crab is to condense the effective breadth of exposure of the photography. The side lap allowance will in most instances prevent gapping flight strips caused by crab. Drift is another anomaly. It is the lateral shift or displacement of the aircraft from the planned flight line caused by the action of wind or navigation errors. If the aircraft drifts to one side or the other side of the flight line, loss of some side lap would be observed on the side opposite to the direction of drift. Drifting from the predetermined flight line is the most common caused serious gapping between adjacent flight lines. Gapping may be due to a poor flight line map even though the pilot actually keeps the aircraft on the flight line as drawn on the map. In such cases, reflights may be required. Usually, crabbing occurs when the flight drifts from the predetermined flight line. This is what my today's presentation is all about. Thank you.